Shalom. Kohlaimla Yahawa Bahashim Yahawshai Bahashim Rakal Kadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahawah in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahawshai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honors and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, coming back at you with another lesson entitled, The Lord is angry with the wicked every day. Who is the wicked according to the Bible? Well, let's go to Psalms 22, verse 16. The book of Psalms, chapter 22, verse 16. For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. The assembly of the wicked encircled Yahawashai. Romans, Edomites, that's the wicked. Edomites, Romans. Let's go back. So those that are sitting back on the sideline while the Most High's people are being afflicted, persecuted, oppressed, there's blood on your hands. I'm telling you straight up. Blood is on your hands. The Most High judges nations and he has no respect of persons. Matter of fact, let's go to um <clears throat> I think Elder Apostle Gabar went here today. Acts ten and thirty four. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. So the most high judges nations. There's blood on your hands if you're sitting back on the sideline, not speaking out against oppression, oppression, wickedness. Let's go to Psalms 7, verse 10. <clears throat> the book of Psalms chapter 7 let's go to verse 8 the Lord shall judge the people judge me O Lord according to my righteousness and according to my integrity that is in me the hopeful elect are maintaining faith and allegiance to this truth. Verse 8, O oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just, for the righteous God trieth the hearts and reigns. That is a perfect balance. The wicked Esau Edom is the end of the world. So wickedness is going to be put out with the destruction of Edom. Verse 10. My defiance is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. God judgeth the righteous, and the Most High is angry with the wicked every day. He's what? He's angry with the wicked every day. So if you're sitting back, not opening your mouth, 
enjoying your position and enjoying your rights of privilege, blood is on your hands. How do we know that? Let's go to Leviticus chapter 5. Leviticus 5, verse 1. And if a soul sin and hear the voice of swearing and is a witness whether he have seen or known of it, if he do not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. So if you are a witness to transgressions, you are an accessory in the eyes of the Most High. He is not respecting individual persons. He's going to judge nations. Well, the Bible says, what has been will be again. Does this not look like ancient Egypt? So Esau Edom is associated with the house of bondage. It's associated with Egypt. Matter of fact, let's pull up an image. Egyptian with whip. on what they were doing to the ancient Israelites. It's not giving me any good images here. Here's one. Here's a couple. Dark-skinned people, sons or descendants of Ham, oppressing dark-skinned people, the Israelites. So what's changed? You tell me. The sound of a whip. So America is a conglomeration of oppressive kingdoms. Ancient Nineveh. Ancient Egypt. Ancient Greece. Ancient Rome. Ancient Philistia. All combined into one. So this scripture can apply to the daughter of Babylon. Now, did this happen in ancient Nineveh? Absolutely. But America is a what? A melting pot. Let's go to Nahum 3, verse 1. Woe to the bloody city. It is full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. The noise of a whip and the noise of the rattling of the wheels and of the prancing horses and of the jumping chariots and of the what? <clears throat> the prancing horses and the jumping chariots, military vehicles, armored personnel carriers. What has been will be again, and there is no new thing under the sun. Pursuant to Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Let's go back to that. So that bloody city in modern times is an extension of all the ancient Gentile kingdoms. The daughter of Babylon the great melting pot. <clears throat> Peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. She sits on many waters. Let's read it again. Woe to the bloody city. It is all full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. Who is the prey? The Israelites. Verse 3. The horseman lifted up both the bright sword and the glittering spear, and there is a multitude of slain, 
and a great number of carcasses, and there is none of their and there is none in of their corpses. They stumble upon their corpses. So this place is going to be judged with great iron spears, the iron weapon. Let's read this again. A horseman is talking about military members. Numbers three, verse three. The horseman lifteth up both the bright sword and the glittering spear, and there is a multitude of slain and a great number of carcasses, and there is none in of their corpses. They stumble upon their corpses. We're going to go into that word spear. Comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H, 2595. Chanith. 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 This is talking about, in modern times, I'm going to show you. Look at this photo. One moment. What is this called? A javelin. What is a javelin? So these, this particular missile is called a javelin. What is a javelin? A javelin is a weapon. See if I can get a good, here we go. See that? Look at that, missile. Let's go back to the word javelin from the Hebrew. Strong's H, 2595. Chanith. Chanith. So this is talking about, in modern times, missiles. And it's going to come in the form of intercontinental ballistic missiles. Let's go back to that. That's why there's carcasses. See? The horseman lifted up both the bright sword and the glittering spear, and there is a multitude of slain and a great number of carcasses, and there is none in of their corpses. They stumble upon their corpses. So what is this iron weapon? Job 20. See? Job 20. Verse 23. When he is about to fill his belly, God shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. It's going to rain intercontinental ballistic missiles. Verse 24. He shall flee from the iron weapon, and the bow of steel shall strike him through. It is drawn and cometh out of the body, yea, the glittering sword cometh out of the gall. Terrors are upon him. Intercontinental ballistic missiles. So this is just a smaller tactical version. But these are going to be used on a global scale. And the slain is going to be many. Multitudes. Heaps upon heaps. Of slain men. See? Let's go here. Psalms 46. Verse 8. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. See that? So a regular spear is not going to make desolations over the earth. Wow. Read it again. Psalms 46, verse 8. 
come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Chariots are military vessels. Let's go into this word spear. Spear, what is the end of the earth? The daughter of Babylon, the western hemisphere. Let's go into this word spear. Comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H, 2595. Chanith. Chanith. Same word we read in Nahum 3. Watch this. Uh-oh. A javelin spear. See that? What are we looking at? Missiles. But they're going to be used on a global level. These same missiles today are called javelin, which are spears. Missiles. Ancient prophets use ancient terminology to describe a future modern battlefield. Future modern weapons of war. Let's go back to Psalms 49, <clears throat> verse 8. Excuse me, Psalms 46, verse 8. Come. Behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Let's go to uh, Psalm 7 and 10. So he's going to break the militaries of the United Nations on the earth. Psalm 7, verse 11. God judgeth the righteous, and the Most High is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, he will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. So this next war is going to be nuclear. Those are the arrows of the Lord. The missile silos are the bows. Verse 13, watch this. He have also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordained his arrows against the persecutors. He ordained ICBMs against the oppressors, persecutors. See, the second edge says his arrows will be shot to the ends of the earth. We'll get that. Psalm 7, verse 13. He have also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. Let's go to second edge 16, verse 13. What arrows? Intercontinental ballistic missiles. Second Ezra 16, verse 13. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. His arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. See? So the Most High is preparing his altar, a great melting pot, the daughter of Babylon. Psalms 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am the Most High. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. He is our safe haven, our protection, our sanctuary, our place of rest, our sword and shield. So we find 
express protection under this truth, an umbrella of wisdom. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Let's look up that word refuge. So he's going to save and defend his people. Comes from the Hebrew. Strong's 4869. Misgav. Misgav. A high tower, a fort, a stronghold, high place, secure height, retreat. So this word is a pavilion, a safe house. Let's go back. So the Bible says what has been. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and get that. Look at this picture. Ancient Egyptians. Now, this picture is a little deceiving. The Egyptians, or Mizraim, are dark-skinned descendants of Ham. And the Israelites are descendants of Shem. Both dark-skinned. Let's go to uh, Ecclesiastes 1, verse 9. The thing that have been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new, it have been already of old time, which was before us. See, what has been will be again. There is no new thing under the sun. But the Most High is going to judge them for touching the apple of his eye. He says in Zechariah chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, He that toucheth you, toucheth the apple of his eye. So you got to pay. You got to pay. Go ahead and close out in Psalms 9, verse 5. Thou hast rebuked the heathen, thou hast destroyed the wicked, thou hast put out their name forever and ever. The wicked, Malachi 1 and 4, Esau, Edom. And those nations following this devil. Verse 6. O thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end. And thou hast destroyed cities. Their memorial is perished with them. But the Lord shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment. And he shall judge the world in righteousness he shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. Did we not read that in Psalms 46? Let's go back to that. Psalms 46. Verse 11, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. He's going to save us out of Jacob's trouble. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Verse 10. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee, the elect of the house of Jacob. Trust in his name. 
sing praises to the Lord, which dwelleth in Zion, declare among the people his doings. When he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them, he forgetteth not the cry of the humble. So he's going to preserve his people, which starts with the house of David, followed by the remnant. Verse 13, have mercy upon me, O Lord, consider my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that liftest me up from the gates of death, that I may show forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion, I will rejoice in thy salvation. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made in the net which they hid, is their own foot taken. So who's building nuclear arsenals? Who's doing that? Esau, Edom, followed by the heathen. That's a pit. They're going to fall in the snare or pit that they dug for their own grave. They literally constructed the what do you call it? The catalyst that's going to bring about a nuclear holocaust, which means burnt offering. They're helping with their own sacrifice. The Most High is a bad man. That's the pit, followed by slavery, because they're going to fall by the sword, these great missiles, and then what's left of them is going to go into captivity. Wow, this is heavy. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made, and the net which they hid is their own foot taken. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executeth. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. What is that? He that leadeth in the captivity shall go in the captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. So the Most High is bound by his word. And the Bible says, As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee, and thy reward shall return upon thine own head. The Most High is pissed off. He's angry with the wicked every day. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, or Kakadash. We got next, Lord Willem, Rock of Thumb, Kwam Yasharala, and Abad Babao. See you on the next lesson. Lord willing, Shalom.